Uh, that is, uh, so, so we're going to be talking about the role of men in marriage, the role of men in marriage uh, from a marriage perspective. So uh, that queen that you see there, that is, no, that is not uh, a member of Wakanda, but that is uh, indeed my wife. <laughs> Every Christmas, uh, we try to do uh, African inspired Christmas pictures. Uh, so you see some of those and those two broke people with us are our friends that call themselves our daughters. They contribute nothing to the financial stability of the household. All they do is take and they are the epitome of consumers. <laughs> but no, they are our daughters, Elena and Amaya. Elena just turned 17 yesterday, so we've got about, what, five more years until she returns to sanity. And uh, Amaya, who will be turning 13 in December, so she is exhibiting signs of her mental instability as well. So pray for us and pray for me uh, as I am the Lone Ranger in the house full of women, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I love it. Uh, my wife is, uh, I'm proud of her because she's stepping outside of her comfort zone. She is excellent behind the scenes. That's where she prefers to be. Uh, if she could, if I could just ask her to unmute really quick and say hello. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm really glad to be here this morning. Thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, so, um, so that's us. And as you can see in the lower right hand corner, I think it's uh, it is us uh, at a at a different or well, me in particular. I shouldn't say that at a different weight class. But that's what marriage does to you sometimes. So let's move on from that. Praise the Lord, and let's go to uh, first point in our next. Uh, so I want to talk about submission, this ugly word of submission. Uh, before I go into what it is, let me tell you why I think this is important. I think submission, it's important to talk about because um, we are living in a time, in that very preacher is to me say we're living in a time, we're living in a time where uh, everyone with a cell phone, uh, a, a computer with a camera, can become an expert. And I think particularly, and I'm not trying to exclude anyone, but particularly for Black women, um, there is this narrative that is being put forth that says women are difficult, women are uh, too picky, they uh, get in their own way, they self-sabotage, uh, they are superficial, and there are plenty of men available, but most of our women just are in love or too distracted or focused on other things to see that. I think that is garbage. Um, I think there is a read, there's a neo, um, neo, this, this neo oppressive masculinity that, that's coming up again. I heard a, a man say in a, in a small clip, a reel somewhere, he said, when a woman graduates from college and then she gets a master's and she gets a doctorate, she, 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 she outprices or she puts herself out, out of the dating pool. Like she's making herself more unavailable. And I thought, what sense does that make to, to be in pursuit, to try to get better, to try to be better, to try to be, to try to grow. And the growth costs you the opportunity for a relationship. That led me to say, what is the issue with men, not male bashing, but what is it that we don't understand? I am, my view biblically is that 
everything starts with a man. When God in the Bible gets ready to do something for his people, when he gets ready to do something in a nation or a family, he begins with a man. Whether we're talking about delivering the children of Israel out of Egypt, we start with Moses. Whether we are talking about taking the children of Israel into the promised land, he started with Joshua. Everything he does in the earth that he, where he wants to change, he starts with a man. And I think if we can make men healthier, then our women will be healthy, our families will be healthier, our schools will be healthier. There's nothing hardly more powerful than a healthy spiritual man submitted to God. Um, so when it comes to marriage, one of the words you hear in the Bible is, is this word submission. And so by definition, it is the act or the fact of accepting. And I really like this yielding, yielding to a sometimes superior force. And I'm glad we said, or the will or authority of another person. Um, biblically, that you, when we submit, you you don't submit necessarily. And that's a that's a that is that definition is it is dictionary. So we we're gonna scratch out that word superior because that is where we kind of mess up, right? Uh, secularly speaking, uh, when we talk about submission, what we hear is, and I'm about to give you a chance to just I want to hear from you. What we hear is uh, lesser than greater than, loss of, uh, dominance, but that is, so we hear that secularly. Biblically speaking, it is, it is simply a matter of order, right? Have you ever been to a classroom, um, those of you who had kids, and you come to pick up your kid from like daycare? You know, like you know, and it's just pandemonium, right? Uh, but all of a sudden, the teacher will say, "You know, clap your hands if you can hear me. Uh, snap your fingers. Let me hear you." Uh, and, and so there, so there is there is order, and the order is realized in the classroom because the children submit to to their to their teacher. Uh, it doesn't mean that the teacher is superior. It's not more important. She doesn't have a greater purpose. But the classroom cannot function properly without there being order, i.e. Uh, uh, submission. Now, so what is the controversy? What's the controversy? I'm going to ask you to tell me what are what are the... What's the controversy when it comes to submission? When I say that, what comes to mind? Doormat. <laughs> right. Can you explain that a little bit more? I, you, I, I think I know where you're going. Well, I think uh, once again, the media, it seems, can only discuss one subject at a time or one, they can only color one subject at a time. So the impression is, is they put on a lot of these real mouthy type women that I've seen on social media who keep saying, I don't want to be a doormat. I'm going to make my own money. I'm going to, uh, you know, I can provide for myself. I don't need no man. And the whole uh thing about submission is that you're going to be at home and you're going to be scrubbing floors on your knees they give it a real <laughs> negative you know a real negative viewpoint and you know as i was growing up my mom pretty much stayed home and four kids and she did just that she took care of the home and i know that times are different but uh, it's gotten a really bad rap and the church has done a poor job of explaining itself and defending the Bible, I think. And uh, 
we've allowed the world to wash over into the church and the church is sort of like standing there, you know, with our thumb up our nose and we don't know what to say. And I think, you know, it's just that it's, it's all about messaging and it's an about, it's about the strength of the message. And right now, the message of the Bible is very weak. The message of the church is very weak, in my opinion. Agreed. 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 Uh, great. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I wanted to touch on what he said, but could somebody just read uh, the a few of the, the comments uh, before someone else begins? I want to. I want to read. I saw some great comments. Yeah, I'll, re I'll read them. Uh, Thank you. We've got the woman loses who she is. We got dictatorship, loss of control, with the right man, freedom, the lack of proper education and clarity regarding the truth keeps the topic controversial in society, loss of identity for the woman, uh, loss of rights or say so responsibilities and role of men, I think is greater than women. If he is careful and do love and respect to relationship, I believe he can save the relationship. It's true that relationship has balance by both contrib contribution, like a moving cycle wheel. But if men want to save the relationship, he can nurture many conflict issues and can solve the conflict in dispute with love and intellect. Um, I wish I can pronounce your name because I would give you a shout out. Um, um, more examples of proper care will help us all have a better understanding that ends the comments. Very good, very good. Anybody else wanna, we got time for one more comment about the, what's the controversy? Someone said fear of I being mistreated, but go ahead, I, I heard someone. Yeah, I was going to say that I guess um, in today's world, um, especially when it comes to social media and women in social media, I think they're afraid of the word submission because I think it comes along with the connotation that their thoughts, opinions, suggestions won't be considered by the man or the husband. So therefore they lose a voice. But I think someone kind of alluded to like with the right person, you know, submission is not going to be a problem because automatically with the right person, they'll consider your thoughts and feelings. So I think that's where the disconnect is when it comes to how the world views submission, especially when it comes to the Bible. Very good. Thank you so much for sharing. The, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 22, verses 23, you've heard this before. It says it's on the screen. Um, and someone said, uh, fear of not having a voice. That's, that's, that's a part of the controversy as well. It says, wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as also Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of the body. Now that, that really is extremely powerful because it gives an example of what the headship looks like. So it tells the wife to submit to her husband. And it says, as unto the Lord, meaning that a wife, a wife's submission to her husband is a part of her service to God. That's no different from any relational interaction we have with other people right it, it's 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 no different right um because even when we are interacting with people who we regard as our enemies the bible says that we are there are specific ways we are to engage with them and we are to think about god and even though we may seem like a pushover um we have to say okay this is as unto the lord um then it goes on to say for the husband is the head of the wife. Okay, that sounds so um, dogmatic. It sounds uh, problematic, but here's the clause. As Christ is the head of the church. So the, I, as a man, I, as a husband, I am to look at how Christ treated the church. 
and the, and use that as my model to say, this is what headship looks like. What then did Christ do for the church? He died. He is the savior of the body. He died. He sacrificed himself for the life of the church. Can I just talk to you for a second? I don't care how mouthy we say a woman is or how combative she may, may be. I think one of the problems with society today is that we have become so distracted or so focused on things that don't matter that we don't recognize pain when we see it. Uh, um, most, most of you all who haven't been living under rock, you've heard that Chris Rock has come out with a, a, a comedy special where he, um, at the end, I guess, talks about what happened with him and Will Smith. And, and one of the things is that it, nothing really is resolved. He's just kind of explaining how he feels comedically, getting back and, and putting more of that business out there on the table. Here's the thing. When, when that brother gets up there and slaps another brother on national television, we're not, we're not seeing that this is somebody in a lot of pain. He's wrong for doing it. He's absolutely wrong. I ain't here to talk about that. I'm here, I'm using that to say, we don't recognize. Now, if Will Smith had got on the stage, excuse me for being graphic, threw up blood everywhere, we would say he needs help. But it seems that with emotional, spiritual, and mental problems, we, when someone acts out of it, we seem to be oblivious and we look at the act and not what's behind it. When, when, when Christ sees the church, he sees us in our brokenness, in our mouthiness, in whatever maladies we, we come to, then by, by Christ saving the church, it is said, what is in him, when he releases it, he's capable of helping the church or the bride that's broken. So I, I'm, res, I'm responding in my mind to the, the, the women we see on social media. You know, I need this and I need this and I need that. I, I think when we hear that mantra, that strong, independent black woman, that strong, independent woman, that's a that mantra. It's in response to something, right? It is in response to to the brokenness that they have encountered. Please don't misunderstand me to to push to push all the blame on men. I'm saying within us is the ability to make a woman healthy, to help her on a journey to be healthy. I, I hope I'm making sense. The, one of the problems is that we come to relationships and we speak of it in terms like this. We say, what do you bring to the table? What do you bring to the table? What, what does that mean? We're talking about a business transaction. Biblically speaking, marriage is not a business transaction. It's a covenant. So it is already problematic to speak of marriage as if we are doing a business transaction. What do you bring to the table? What men bring to the space of marriage is that within every man is the ability to be the head. In other words, he has the ability to sacrifice himself. He has the ability to put someone's, the needs of this woman before his own. He has the ability to supply. He has the ability to support. He has the ability, believe it or not, to communicate. He has the ability. He has that ability. God never gives instruction to people who cannot do the instruction. Matter of fact, he supplies us with the strength to do what he's called us to do. So when we think about headship, our model for men is that God has put in me the power and the ability to, and I'm not preaching the damsel in distress, 
to help help um, support whatever savior, whatever healing they need. God can use me to bring that to, to that woman. I'm gonna go back to that mantra, that, that strong independent black woman. Here's what I ask brothers sometimes when I get in debates about that. I say, do you honestly think, do we honestly think that a, a, a woman woke up and said, I don't need a man. I don't want one. I'm strong and I'm independent. Or does that sound like a response to systemic brokenness where someone has tried to depend on someone who has not been in place? And in response, they said, you know what? I, 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 I am strong. And as a result, I'm going to thrive in my independence. You, you, you see, we have to, as men, understand that what we hear, what we hear is a response many times to brokenness and to pain. And to my brothers who say, I ain't going to be, I ain't going to be your therapist. I ain't going to, well, well, I don't. Well, just stay out of it because if you get married, all of her trauma, all of her pain, all of her difficulties and what is not resolved is yours, as well as all of our issues. So, so uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but uh, let me get just two responses to what I'm saying, then I'm going to go to my next point, even if you don't agree with me. I'll, I'll read the comments and while people get their thoughts together. Um, so let's see, God equips us with what we need to carry out his calling. Yes, he has the responsibility of making sure his wife and children are honored before him. Um, and in response to the what you were saying, Pastor James, about a woman waking up saying she doesn't need a man, uh, I have thought that way, but that thinking leads to nowhere. It's definitely a response to systemic oppression and a response to trauma. Many use their experiences to shape their decisions and emotions. Um, without leadership, people rely on emotions and experiences. That was good. That's good. Those are good. Um, and uh, some of us have been conditioned to think about the opposite sex. Uh, sad to say some women want the bag and take advantage of men's pockets. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> Okay. So let me let me go on from that. I want to piggyback on the the the, the bag, uh, and and hear what I'm saying, um, because I I realize that because of how it is because of what we have been through collectively, uh, what I'm saying sometimes can sound as a shock. Uh, I, I I don't say that in 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 the sense that you've never heard anything I'm saying. Like I'm saying something so revolutional or, or like I'm some great speaker, but I, I, we hear more now more than ever, you hear more bad relational advice because like I said, everybody got a phone, everybody got a platform. And in my estimation, uh, more than 80% don't need one. That They don't need a platform. They need to be sitting under somebody, talk about something else, but don't talk about that. So when we we see women, you know, chasing the bag, um, <laughs> uh, if if I am in a country and socially, politically, economically, historically, who I am and people that look like me, people that are me, are put 
always at the very least in second class, what will develop in me and people like me is a, a pursuit of the bag. Everything that uh, aggravate us as men, everything that aggravates you as a single man that women say is the reaction to a man that looked just like you. Now, you may say, well, that ain't my fault. But Ephesians tells us, Paul, the Apostle Paul tells us that God has built you to be able to take it. God has built you. You are designed. Can we go to the next slide? You are designed, you are built to be able to handle it. You are built like a man. I ain't talking about machismo. I'm talking about you are built internally. You are designed. You have been that way since you uh, was since you were smaller. Those of you who who have raised both a girl and a boy, you you know the difference. Those differences in us as men are there so that you can cover her. Um, obviously, my presupposition is that when you are that, submission comes naturally. It may not come easy, but it comes. So submission has to be earned. It is earned. When you are dating, you are auditioning. Brothers, when you are dating, you are auditioning. Now, if you're dating just to... If, if you, if, I can be kind of wrong sometimes. If you're dating just to get some, then then I ain't talking to you. I, I, I think you're broken, right? If that's what you're doing, then you are making you are making it harder for the next man to come behind you. And and hopefully that next man won't say, well, then your issues it ain't mine. No, God has equipped you. You are built to handle it. Now, I'm a Pentecostal preacher, and I kind of felt my help coming on. You are built to handle it. And so when you're built like that, you we understand what well, my role in a marriage as a man is, is predicated on how I'm designed. My role in my marriage, in my children's life, is predicated on how I'm designed. Men tend to uh, handle things more internally first than externally. That's not necessarily a bad thing. House burning down. Uh, you, both y'all can't be around there. Hey, hey. Yeah. Somebody, somebody gotta, somebody gotta be like, hey, hey, hey. Uh, let's go this way. Somebody say, hey, I think let's just get on the ground and let's crawl to the door over there. Somebody gotta say, hey, do you see any light anywhere where we can get out of here? You, 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 you are built to the way your emotions are, the way you see things. Men tend to be more practical. One of the challenges as a pastor with, when it comes to men and worship is to really get men to engage because worship is, is more theoretical. I'm lifting my hands, you know, saying, God, I love you, you're there. It's all, it's all spirit, right? Now, if I say, uh, brothers, there is, the, the, the church has uh, the fence on the children's playground is leaning, it's about to fall. The city is gonna shut it down. I need, we need to get that thing fixed in three days. You, you can get me into, to, because it's more logical, it's more practical, I see the result. God has built you that way. And because you are designed that way, you have been built, you have been equipped to handle it. So we're talking about masculinity versus identity. Masculinity is just a style. Masculinity is a style. It does not mean that you are a man. It is, it is very contextual. There are some things that are masculine in America that are not masculine in India. There are some things that are masculine to, to indigenous people of this country that are not masculine uh, somewhere else. Uh, you know, if you look at indigenous um, Native American cultures, masculinity, there's this, you know, you gotta kill a buffalo. 
You got to you go on your first. And so that's you, you become a man. You see, the problem, and somebody said that, like Brother Ron said this, that social media is, is trying to define what a man is. And when you define a man by masculinity and not by purpose, now everybody, regardless of what your, what your genitalia is, you can say you're a man because anybody can impersonate masculinity. Anybody, it's just, it's just a, it's just a way of handling it. Now, now that here's a side note to my sisters. Um, be careful that you don't chase masculinity and use masculinity as a define, as defining what a strong man is. Because if, if you if you talk to men and I'm not trying to exclude anybody, but particularly black men, you'll hear that sometimes we still, we carry the hurt from when you didn't pick me in high school. And here I was getting my work done, trying to do my best. And you looked over me and picked the dude that was hitting his chest. You, you, you picked the dude that was a thug. You picked, the, And we like, good Lord. And, and that hurts. It hurts a lot. To the extent that 10 years later, now when I got a podcast, I'm I'm trashing y'all because, because I'm I'm in pain from it. So so be careful that and, and when you speak to your daughters, your cousins, your nieces, your, your sisters, help them to understand that a man needs to know who he is. That's what makes me a man. I know who I am. And, and for, for some people, masculinity in your house, it can look like your dad watched, used to watch TV all the time. I mean, he used to watch football all the time. Well, what if you meet the man for, that God has for you and he don't like sports at all? I need a man, you know, I need, I need a man that he just, you know. No, he don't, he don't like sports. He don't like sports. He likes to go to symphonies. He likes to read. But does that make him any less a man? No, it's just, the way he is a man is different from the masculinity you have seen. And that's for us as well, brothers. We have to be comfortable in who we are because it's hard to keep up that, that facade of, of masculinity, you know? And, and even the way we approach men, what women sometimes like, you know, it's just this too much. Yeah, <laughs> it's just too much. You just, you, you we, we have been sold the idea that that's what she wants. She wants masculinity. Hey, girl, what's up? You know, I, I don't know nobody talks like that. But, you know, it's like Nino Brown. You know, that's just, you know, in New Jack City, he's just this. When you watch it now, it's, it's cringy. It's cringy to me. You know, sit down before I make change. It's like, oh, my gosh. Like, did, did they think black people talk like that? I mean, it's just cringy. It's just this over... This, this saturated, uh, this imagine of, of of what masculine is. Well, most men don't talk like that. And when you know who you are, just just walk in it. God, I felt the Holy Ghost. Just walk in it. And and believe it or not, she'll respond to it. She'll respond to it. And the right one will respond to it. I'm going to just chase a rabbit for a second and I'll come back. Sometimes, brothers, the ones that don't respond is God helping you to make a right choice. But some of us are so hooked on what an Instagram model looks like, you don't want to take the one God has for you. So you keep saying, ain't no women around here and, and they ain't here, but you're chasing after the ones that's so broken that it, they, just, they just cannot recognize it. You, 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 oh man, Brian Johnson, direction, <laughs> rejection sometimes is direction. God is showing you. And here she over here is, and you're saying, well, no, nah, she, got, she got this. And you can pick her apart, but you can't pick Instagram model apart. You can pick her apart with one look. No, she got five kids, you got three kids. So what? God has equipped you to handle it. If, if, if God, God, provides where he leads. 
He provides where he leads. And some of us brothers, we are what we are because of a stepfather, because of somebody stepped in. You see, so masculinity is just a style. It's a, it's a style. Don't be hooked on a style. I was trying to get a suit one time and um, brothers, I'm, I'm struggling with my weight, man. I'm, I ain't never going back to my high school weight or my college football weight. That just ain't going to happen. Okay. So transparent moment. I'm about 235. All right. I don't look like it, mind you. Praise the Lord. But I'm, and I'm just trying to get back to around 200. Okay. So, um, and so I was getting a suit and I wear a 44 regular, right? So I wear a 44 regular. And um, so I put on the suit and it was the wrong, it was the wrong size. Right, it was the wrong size, okay, but and it fit perfectly. And I said to the guy, I said, This size, I said, This, he said, That fits perfect. I said, Yeah, it does feel good, but I wear 44 regular. He said, It fits. I said, Yeah, but I wear 44 regular. Finally, he got frustrated and said, Man, why are you married to a size? If the suit fits, it fits. So, what about the size? I think that's how we sometimes as men look at what it means to be a man. We have this prescribed, prescribed, predetermined way of what of what masculinity looks like women to. And because it doesn't fit, it ain't that size. We don't want to we don't want to wear it. God has brothers. God has a style of suit for you to wear. And when you wear it, it looks good. You can be married to that 44 regular if you want to, and it's tight around your belly, tight on your back, the sleeves too high. And, and just because 80 other men dress the same way, it still don't fit. Knowing who you are as a man and walking in it, <laughs> that's, that's power. So you, you got to become a Jedi master, right? You can't, it, it's, it's like one of my favorite characters uh, is, is Yoda. Uh, because the first, uh, and I'm telling my age here, the first Star Wars that came out, I did not understand why Yoda was so powerful. He's this Jedi master, right? And I'm like, well, how is he the master? I see why Darth, Darth Vader is the master. I see why these other ones and Obi Wan Kenobi they had, they had, uh, they had, they had fight scenes. So finally, when the I guess the prequels came out in what in two thousands late nineties, yeah, early two thousand whatever, got to see why Yoda was the master. He was both a master mentally. Uh, and he had the ability to remain true to himself, regardless of what was going on around him. And he only pulled out his lifesaver when it counted. You see, because he trained himself to recognize moments when it was time to fight. When you, brother, when you in on a date, on you somewhere and, and, the bill is not right. That ain't a time to come out with your sword. You look crazy. What you mean? This ain't, this ain't. And we, we, are, we, have a, we have a generation of men who are not masters of their own, of their own bodies, masters of their own self. You, you know, I'm not putting anybody down, but I'm, I'm saying what it looks like. Uh, I was watching an episode of Ayan Van Zandt and she was, they had men, one man had fathered six children five different women, another man uh, fathered uh, five children, three different women. That's, that's an, now things happen with different marriages and stuff like that. But, but a lot of those cases were examples of men who had not mastered their own body. You, you, I've got to master my body. If I'm going to be the head of a woman, I got to be able to control my emotion, control my sex drive, control my own body. If I'm gonna be a girl. so so Yoda epitomizes that ability to 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 um <laughs> to be able to fight when it's necessary. And 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 I think 
that fight, showing it to people that trust you. Um, I my ring. It, 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 it is important because it is an intimate act. Showing how you fight, showing a lot of your skill set, that's, 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 that's intimate. Another thing about being a Jedi Master is that Yoda was a teacher. Brothers, I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, you, we, we have something to teach. You have something to teach. That makes you invaluable. So that that's that that is extremely attractive to be able to teach a woman something. Again, I ain't preaching a woman in damsel in distress. But if you cannot, if I was a woman and you can't show me or teach me anything, then what's the point? I dare you, I dare you to go, any women to go in uh in Home Depot or Lowe's and just start looking lost. Just, just go down the aisle where, 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 where men are and grab us up and start saying, hmm, oh, gosh, which I guarantee you, they go, now that's not a dating tactic. That's just an ex social experiment. Men will be like, well, what men will be like, uh, uh, what, 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 what you need? What, what, uh, how can I help you? We, we have to teach. You gotta have something to teach. It it could be about gardening. It could be about plumbing. It could be about a show. It could be about. But you gotta have something to teach. Something to give. The word education really comes from the root word comes from uh, the Greek word educato, which means to bring out. When you teach, it is not so much of just pouring into, but it is also bringing out of her. Am I making sense? <laughs> or AutoZone, right, right. You, 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 you have something to teach. And I heard somebody in the comments say, teaching is very sexy. It is. Have something to teach. Uh, have something to share. That's what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you. Uh, Yoda was a teacher. He taught Luke how to control his, his emotions. I would do my Yoda impression, but I'm not going to do it. Y Yoda had, he was teaching Luke to control your emotion. It, okay, that's it. I'm, I'm starting to sound like 7-Eleven guy. But you, you've got to, con he, he was teaching a younger man, control who you are. <laughs> control your emotions. That is a prerequisite to marriage, by the way. You ain't got to have everything done, but you got to be able to, to have uh, a control of your emotions. Before I go to the next slide and, well, and get comments or responses, I'm going to say this. There's this passage in the Bible where you've heard the story between Cain and Abel. Uh, Cain is wroth. He's angry. Oh, King James language. He's mad. The Bible says his countenance had failed. God says, what's wrong with you? He says, um, I'm, and he said, why is your countenance falling? And he says, if, if you don't get control of this, sin lieth at the door and it desires to have you. Another version says, you must master it. God tells Cain, you got to get that under control. It's going to take you. And obviously, you know the story that it does eventually take him until he murders, beats his brother over and over and over in the field until he dies. A lot of us as men, because of trauma we have went through, uh, uh, struggle to control our emotions, struggle to control our emotions. Ron, you're right. Peter's a great example of Jesus mentoring a man who had immense potential, but if he did not control his emotions, he would not be what God called him to be. Peter, thou, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. You, you the man. I'm gonna start this movement called the church. I'm you the person. In the in the next chapters, he cutting somebody ear off. He 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 picks up the ear, put it back on the guard's head because he's trying to teach Peter that 
if you're going to be the head, you got to be able to control yourself. You see, if, you, if you're going to be the head, you got to be able to control yourself. Brother Ron, one of the spirit, fruits of the spirit listed in Galatians chapter five is temperance, self-control. You see, uh, so so let's become Jedi masters. Let me hear just a few of your responses or comments if anybody would like to before we go to the next slide. I'm going to chime in for a bit, Pastor James. You know what? Um, yes. God bless you, bro. You are on the money. Uh, I'm doing a presentation in a few weeks uh, called Love is Not Enough, and you are stealing all my thunder, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you are just taking it. You know, and just to give the guys a preview, um, why love is not enough, because it, you know, I'm going to, we, we need to start with who we are. We need to start with understanding ourselves. We need to start with understanding our own purpose. So we cannot let the world define who we are as men. We can't let women define who we are as men. We got to let God define. God determining the type of man and the leader that we're going to be. And it's in God and knowing him where we discover our purpose. And that's how we need to present ourselves into the world. So, when, you know, you talked about men has, should have something to teach. If you have a purpose, if you have a passion for something that's God yes. given, it's going to be attractive. Yes. But I think, you know, men and women, we need to understand that once you figure out your purpose, and you begin to operate in that purpose, it draws a line in the sand that's going to exclude a whole lot of people out of your life. So that person you may think you want it, it will exclude that person and you're going to begin to align yourself with the purpose, with the person that lines up with the purpose that Christ has for you. You know, but anyway, I can go on and on. I'm not going to, I want to let somebody else talk. I know when I get excited, um, <laughs> I got a lot to say. So Sean is laughing. But, bro, you stealing my thunder, man. You right on point with this, man. That's all awesome. I can say, man. God bless you. I'm supposed to be working. But I had to <laughs> shut I had to shut the browser down because this is good. This is, this is, I got, I got two pages of notes already. Oh, praise God. Thank all you. Right, one accord. One accord. Let, let me get up out of here. The next person can, uh, can chime in now. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Somebody else. Can I hear from a sister? Can I hear from a lady? What do you, what do you think uh, from this segment? A bit like a man. Just a few thoughts. Well, I, I, I want to say something, Pastor. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm Helene. I, I, I am just blessed, truly blessed, because when a man does walk in his leadership ability, it gives a woman a chance to be vulnerable, and she can yes. be feminine and safe and secure and and it ain't nothing like a woman that you know trusts you to the ability to where she don't have to um always you know like me i've been married before but i've always had to be somewhat the head i didn't have what you're talking about i desire that so much but it it, it is just it's just awesome it's refreshing just to hear that and when a and when a man know who he is in God, there's nothing that we would, I'm going to say me, there's nothing that I would not do for my husband, my mate, because I'm his help me. I'm not his equal. I'm not his doormat. I'm his help me. I'm his wife. And I, that's what I desire. That's what my prayers. This is so great. I'm glad I'm, I'm on here today. Thank you so much. You're blessing my spirit. Absolutely. Thank you, Helene. Thank you. As you were talking, there was something that I wanted to say earlier. Brothers, I want us to fight against these lies. The Bible says that the devil is the father of lies. Uh, and some things may be, it can be halfway true. Like you can see a woman and she's kind of aggressive and they say, you know, that she don't have feminine energy. We, we have to unpack what that means and all that kind of stuff. But just think about this, it, just, ca just from a capitalistic standpoint, just from a money standpoint, why in the world would a woman say, I, I don't want anybody to help me with my bills. I don't know, you wanna come in, help me pay for my car, I can pay it by myself. What in the world is, what, what sense does that make? 
it obviously is a response to trauma and pain. It, it don't. It makes no ec just economic sense. No, I want to keep struggling paying the mortgage, the car insurance, the homeowners insurance, the homeowners association daycare. I want to keep paying for everything and stretching myself, driving my son to practice, going over here, doing a session at work, going to a Zoom meeting, trying to trying to walk and get exercise. I, I want to do it all by myself. No, no. It, Nobody says that. No woman is saying that. What they are saying is, I have been burned. I have been hurt. I have been in a position where probably because I decided to marry someone who, who did not show me uh, the things that needed to be shown and I gave him something that he did not earn, that, that that's my response to that. And the dating experience has been so tough. See, this is why, it, to, to Helene's point, this is why it is important that our requirements, and I know as a single group, you've talked about this, um, that you, that, that the physical be really low on the list. It, it really is. You gotta, because I think <laughs> it's, it's really gotta be low on the list because in terms of marriage and what, marriage requires from a man and a woman, it doesn't mean anything. What does it mean? What value does six two bring that five eight doesn't bring? What brothers, what value does a big booty bring to you as a man? I, I see you with your eyebrow up like what? That 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 a that a thicker waist doesn't bring it it doesn't matter it, it doesn't it doesn't thick thighs whatever physical attributes don't affect they don't help a person communicate they don't help a person see understand support love it doesn't make i'm not saying it ain't it ain't there it ain't in the room but the height at which we put it at it's really off, and and we put that a lot on women, but it's on us too, brothers. It's on us too. Uh, can we go to that next uh, slide? So, Pastor James, you have a um, a hand from Lisa. You want to take? Please, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hey, Pastor James, um, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, I just want to tell you that I'm just so blessed um, about this talk. It's just so needed. I just wanted to respond. And you were mentioning earlier, like, you know, women's response to like, I don't need a man. I can do this all by myself. Like I, I come from like my mom's generation. She was in a generation where she was solely dependent on my dad. He was the breadwinner. Um, and there there was um, more bad days than good days, you know, and I, and I saw as a child, you know, some of the sacrifices my mom had to to make sacrificing herself because she financially was not up to par with my dad um, opinions and decisions. She had to just keep it to herself, but he made most of the decisions and the way she eventually raised me and my sister, um, she would tell us, I want you guys to um become something. I want you guys to be in the, um, financially independent. I want you guys to be able to make decisions for your life because I didn't really have that opportunity. And so, so interesting because um, I'm in a generation where I, I I'm not going to say I don't need a man. I, I do desire to be married, but um, some of my uh, male counterparts, they would say, I miss back in the days when women were real women, when they were feminine and they were submissive and all that. And I'm trying to tell these men, like, those are the women that's giving us this generation the advice to be financially um, independent, to be a go getter because of what they went through. So, I mean, each generation has its its pros and cons and curses and blessings. But um, I just want to point out that the women that most men want, the feminine submission, homemaker, stay at home. Those are the women that are giving my generation the advice to go out there and to become somebody. So, I mean, the truth hurts, but it, it, it's the truth. <laughs> it, it, you know, that's a power. I, I was watching a clip of, uh, oh, I almost called his name. 
he's very negative. He has some positives, and not Kevin Samuels, but uh, Charlie Charles something Charles White, and he was talking about to to your point. He was talking about what they were talking, what you're talking about about you know, uh, you know his mom and and that generation. Uh, but he included in that that she, those women didn't complain and didn't ask their man about where they were going. But when the man died, they were left the house and insurance. What silliness is that? That in order for me, for a woman to have any financial security, she has to endure unfaithfulness. She has to endure not being heard. That ain't submission, that's oppression. That's not, that's not being submitted, that's oppression by a society. I hope, I hope I'm not over the over, over I hope I'm not offensive. That's a society, that's that's white supremacy in blackface. Where where we where we take a hierarchical system and we say, because of your gender, not purpose, because of your agenda, you don't get an opinion. And and I pay the bills. And because I pay the bills, you take this. See, that's a transaction. That's a deal. That's sharecropping. That's not a covenant. That's not, that's not a covenant. A covenant is that I swear to the highest power in the universe that I'll take care of you, that I'll forsake everyone for you, that I'll support you, and you likewise. And even when you don't do your part, my covenant, that's that as unto the Lord part, my covenant is to God. So I stay faithful to it even when you tripping. See, see that, and I'm saying, my message is to our men is that we are built to do it. Society can influence you to do elsewhere, but you are built built to do it. And you're right, sister. Uh, uh, women did tell, um, they, they would tell uh, this generation, uh, don't be in a position where you have to endure uh, abuse of heart, disregard of person, in order to have a roof over your head. That, that was, now we had some great men that showed us, had some great men that showed us. My father just passed recently. He, he, he was telling, my sister told me that when she was getting ready, she was at FAMU and was kind of struggling. He said, you need to graduate because you don't want to be in a position where because of the finances and this capitalistic nation, where you struggle and you've got to compromise your identity in order to be fed and clothed. Mm -hmm. see, see, men, when we walk in identity, a woman's training, education, job, compensation, it ain't never a threat to you. It's never a threat because you can't be me. God has made you to fit me. You can't be me. The, the, one of the challenges with, with, with young, this, this, this generation of men, one of the things we say is that we say, well, I need feminine energy. Even if a woman doesn't give that energy, if you walk in your identity, it will come. Mm -hmm. In likelihood, it will come. Don't show me the one that won't. Don't show me the one out of a thousand that won't. If you, you mean to tell me you go on a date with a woman and you and you and you close and you get to the parking lot and you say, "Just stay right here. I want to come and open the door." You think she's gonna be like, "No, I'm gonna open my own door." No, no, no. She's gonna be in that feminine surrendered space and let you do it. Don't we don't want to let the enemy create a false narrative or speak for women in your mind, and you start saying stuff to yourself that women that you ain't never heard a woman say, but because everybody else say they say it, we start saying what well, the women you ain't never heard a woman say that. 
When you walk in it, you have the ability, brother, you have, God has put it in you that when you walk in your purpose, you will, you will get surrender. You will get that energy that all of us want. Um, James. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, just right quick, I wanted to interject. Um, so, so First Lady um, hasn't spoken yet, but Lowell and Janine met in college and Lowell graduated first and Janine stayed and finished her degree. She didn't like, oh, Lowell is graduated. He can, you know, he got a job. He can take care of us. She finished her degree. So independence doesn't mean, or being self-sufficient doesn't mean that you have, you know, that you have to be like either or. It does, being a woman being independent doesn't mean I have to be like a man. It doesn't, and 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 you don't have power Very to, good. to submit if you don't have power. <laughs> the whole point is that you have power that you're submitting. So yes. she has a degree, she has a career, has changed to another career. So that that intellect, that capability to like, okay, you know, I have resources. That doesn't change the fact that she's submitted to her husband. So you can be capable, able, independent, and choose to submit as a wife into a marriage that you don't have to like choose one or the other. It's just how you walk in that and not it being a battle of, okay, we both trying to be in control or both trying to be the man. The, the husband has a role as what we're talking about today and the wife has a role, but the, the difference as what Lisa was saying earlier is that we're not, we're not having to say, all right, I'm going to get married and therefore there is no need for me to be educated, for me to have a career, for me to um, be, have any skills or self-sufficiencies outside of the home and being a wife. You can still have those skills and, and Janine can burn, okay? She can cook. Yes, <laughs> She is excellent at that. But she has skills outside of the home that if for whatever reason, you know, Pastor James lost his mind <laughs> and, oh, and they had to break up, she will be all right. OK, it's not, yeah. it's not as if it's been it had to be a decision of an either or she has power that she has submitted. She is not powerless. So I just wanted to make that point. Sister, you know, Janine. Uh, can you, we were talking about something. She probably will say this in the breakout session, but can you just briefly talk about you and I were talking last night and we were talking about this and in, in our in our prep work about regarding compensation? Okay. Uh, thank you, Tashara. I appreciate that. Um, so my husband and I were speaking about compensation last night and um, throughout our marriage, I pretty much um, made more income than him. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't submit to him when it comes to our financial decision. Um, I don't have monopoly over our income just because I make more. And he's not threatened by me making more. Um, when we sit down and discuss the bills or you know, we have a, a daughter that's going to college next year, we have goals where we wanna bring down our debt as much as possible um, to make room for other things. Um, and I, I go to him and I ask, you know, hey, with this credit card, do you think we should tackle this one first because it has the highest interest rate or this one first because it has the highest balance, something like that. Um, but I submit to his opinions. I submit to his authority. And um, he also values mine. Um, I can come to him with my suggestions and my ideas and my thoughts. And he takes that into consideration because he can trust me with it. Um, but he knows that I can I can balance it. I can balance my opinions and my thoughts on how we should go. But I can also take into consideration the vision that God has given him to lead our family. And so there's no battle over whose money is it or anything like that. Um, it's just a, 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 a team. We are team members in this marriage and we're making it work for our family. Thank you for that, honey. The the thing is, is that uh, you know, like I I am I'm the head, and and the head, I made the decision to say, I think you should handle our finances. 
She's better at it. Not because she made more money, she's better at it. Uh, that's leadership. That's and and I'm sure there are times where she's like, gosh, oh, I don't feel like doing this. I just because she's busy with other things, but she's better at it. She's better at she has a little, she got this chart, you got this big old binder full of bills that some of them bills two years old need to throw them away, but she keeps track of you know, month by month by month, she, somebody said, right, Ron, effective leadership knows how to delegate. I'm not, that doesn't, I'm not threatened by it. And, and to, to somebody else's point, a sister made, to not losing her identity. See, see, that's, that is submitting. She is submitting. I'm, I'm saying you have a better skill set on that than me. You, you really are. Here's the challenge sometimes that when people have a skill set that has that has been traditionally grouped on the masculine or feminine, then when you are married to married to that tradition, it can cause conflict. And I can't, it will. Because traditionally a man um, should you know be working. Traditionally, a, a woman should be cooking. But what if the man is a better cook? What if he can really burn? Uh, honestly, and this is the truth, she testified, I was a better cook when we got married. My wife is from New Jersey. I'm from the northern part of Florida, a.k.a. South, South, South Georgia. <laughs> and... Um, I would ask for breakfast. She was giving me a bagel. Brothers, <laughs> I come from grits and eggs in the morning. That dry donut ain't going to, that dry donut is not going to get it. I wasn't feeling that. So I showed her, hey, this is what I like. You know, now I ain't over her every moment. Now you have my mama cooking. No, 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 no. But, but she had a skill set. We, I didn't know she had it. Hey, she has surpassed me. Um, but but sometimes traditional, somebody put in the comment, traditional tradition versus marriage, sometimes your tradition can kill your marriage or kill marriage opportunities because you're more you already married, you married to a tradition, and you 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 don't look available because you're you already married to your tradition. You got this, brothers, you got this wife that don't exist. She doesn't exist. It used to be like in my marriage ministry experience, there used to be more women, uh, like women be married to a man that don't exist. You know, like he's 6'2", he's, he's 220, he used to play football, he got a business, he got a home in, in Miami, and he got a home here in Atlanta, and he does business in New York, and he works out, so, like the unicorn, that just, just don't exist, you know. Men, we kind of have that too. She work at she 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 greet me when I come home. She take my hat off my head. She she got the meal. The kids are all behaved. The house is clean, and she make money. No, 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 no. It's just sometimes we're married to our traditions and our perceptions. Let me wrap this up before we go to our breakout sessions. Um, so, mission impossible, right? So. Uh, in the word submission, the root word is, uh, is there a question in the comments? If there is, let me, um, let me, um, I don't wanna, <laughs> somebody got to see. Yeah. Let me, don't, go ahead. Danny asked if uh, you can comment on prenuptial agreements. The Bible okay. doesn't uh, address them. Okay, well, prenuptial agreements is, it is not really biblical. Um, it is, it is trying to, it's, it's trying to, to enter into a marriage, uh, it's trying to be baptized, but you go and you just say, I just put my foot in. <laughs> just, just put my foot in. I don't want to go under, under. I just, I just want, it's a, it is, and somebody put in the comment, it is a contract. And it's difficult because we're trying to introduce a transactional or a contract in a covenant. You're trying to be, 
You're trying to, you cannot open yourself to love without opening yourself up to heartbreak. So if someone is fixated on a prenuptial agreement, then to me, that is, and, and I'm, from, I'm, a, I'm a preacher, so I'm coming from a biblical standpoint, that speaks to issues that need to be resolved first. Why would you marry someone that you need to protect your assets from? Why would you marry someone to protect yourself from? I, I saw a video of uh, Liza Minnelli, I think. She was marrying her fifth husband and Michael Jackson was in the corner as crazy as he was. He was looking like this is some crazy stuff. He was, I mean, he was, he had his hat on, the black hat with the red shirt and everything, I think. But he was looking like, girl, you crazy. Like, he was like, this ain't gonna go well. Even Michael Jackson knew this wasn't gonna go well. Uh, but she had all these prenups and stuff like that. So I think prenups are a sign of, of issues that need to be worked out. You know, um, and because marriage is that serious, you, you know, when I traditionally do marriage, I read for that traditional marriage book and it says the introduction, actually, if you look at the marriage vows as preachers say them, there is still a chance to get out. <laughs> as we're reading it, there's a chance to get out because they say it is, it is not to be entered into without counsel unwise is not to be entered into lightly it is it is a covenant so yes for richer or for poorer it is now sometimes it just doesn't work out i don't think having separate bank accounts is unbiblical uh me and my wife have separate bank accounts and early on the way i was responsible so irresponsible spending money thank god we did it is not now now when you can't have access to it or uh, and, and some things you just need to put in place because I'm not, somebody can say, I'm not there yet discipline-wise. And so if you ain't there yet discipline-wise, then you just, but uh, but that can't, that can't persist. And somehow Janine had access to both accounts, but I couldn't access it. <laughs> but uh, so... Uh, yes, money can make people do a lot of some self-esteem. Money is a tool. Money is a tool. Um, it is you, you. When I speak of marriage and relationships, it it, it really it's kind of like Paul says when he's talking about marriage. And he says, "Ah, I'm talking about marriage, but I'm talking I'm really talking about Christ in the church." Because marriage is so, is such an intimate thing. There is no other relationship on earth that is more intimate than marriage. I know you love your child. I know you love your children. But there is, you, you, you're raising them to leave you. There is no relationship more intimate on earth between a man and a woman. God sees it so that he says, when, I'm, when God is saying, when I'm trying to explain to you what I want to have with the church, I use a marriage to show you. That's how intimate and how much respect God has for marriage. That's how intimate it is. So, um, uh, uh, you know, those those prenups and sometimes, you know, they are signs of somebody trying to get married in in pre in marriage counseling phase, <laughs> and you still need to work that out. So in, in the word submission is the root word mission. It's, it's mission. Um, brothers, if you want a woman to submit to you, my God, you have to, I agree with that, Sean, you have to have a mission. She needs to have a mission to submit to. Let, let's go back to elementary school or junior high, sub, under, that's the prefix, mission. She's putting herself under a mission. A woman would be foolish to submit to someone who has no mission, i.e. purpose for life. In many cases, when, you, when a woman gets married uh, and there's no mission, then she's married for something else. 
money, it's looks, and it doesn't last. It's, it's unhappy, it's frustrated. Um, so you you gotta have a you got there must be a mission. Like what mission are you on? I, I grew up, you know, with friends and we would watch movies and we, you know, we on a mission. It make you feel really good as a young boy. Like we're on a mission. We gotta go save the, we gotta go destroy the evil Lord to rescue the the whole planet. There was a mission. There's something about those things, those movies, those scenarios that speak to us as men. Why? Because God has made us to be on mission. That doesn't mean women don't have a mission, but that means if you want to be the head of a household, if you want to lay up, hello, if you if you want that, if you want a woman to turn the bedroom in the county fair, <laughs> you better have a mission. If not, she can do it, but it's going to cost you money. See, now that's transactional. It ain't relational. So, so, so submission, you got to have a mission. What, what am I trying to do? And I think women are, uh, again, my congregation is, in, in Atlanta, it is 100% African-American. And I'm not trying to put anybody else or exclude anybody else, but I'm speaking to my experience. Um, black women can be very, very forgiving, very, very understanding, particularly, brothers, if you have a mission. You can be 40 years old and have two baby mamas, be on child support. But if you got a mission, if you got a plan that is in action, that you are working on and you are building something, you, you, you will get accepted. She'll, she'll open the door for you because there's something innate in a woman that responds positively to a man on a mission. I think subliminally, that's why men in uniform are attractive. Because <laughs> it, it, it's, a, it's a man on a mission. Whether he delivering mail, boy, he delivering that mail. Ooh, he, it's a man on a mission. You know, it, it's only, you, what we see is somebody with purpose, somebody with a mission. So uh, a firefighter, he's on, oh, he's on a mission. Look at him. On, all of that, I think, speaks to our subliminal a healthy desire for a for a man on a mission. I said our, I meant women's desire for a man on a mission. Let me read this verse, Genesis chapter two, verse 18. And the Lord said that, that it was not good for a man to be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. Help do what? Gotta have a project. Help do what? You understand? You, you, you got to help. You got to have a project you're working on. Uh, the project, it, could be your, it needs to be yourself. It needs to be other things too. What are you, what are you doing? What are you, what you doing? It, it's, it's like going up to a woman uh, in the desert uh, with, with some oars and say, you need to rope. If you don't, if you don't row, you don't see. That's wrong with y'all tonight. No, you you gotta have sure. Hey, I'm I'm rowing this boat. I'm rowing. I'm rowing. Can you help me? Um. So, so brothers, should you accept this mission? <laughs> should you accept this mission? Uh, can can you submit to that? Can you submit to what God wants you to be, so that you so that women can submit to us? Yeah. Now somebody had a question. I think I hit a nerve on that baby's mama thing. Somebody had a question. Yeah. Um, Lisa had a question on um, would uh, would a woman with two baby daddies be accepted the same way as a no, man with two baby mamas? No, 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 she wouldn't. And that's and that's unfortunate. It's it's wrong. And that's out of our unhealthiness. That's out of un our unhealthiness because we see every day that women handle, touch, care for, support, feed, grow things, people that, that were not their, I shouldn't say their fault, that they had nothing to do with 
to bring into existence. Uh, nurturing is not a feminine behavior. And I think that's what kind of leads men to be like, well, I ain't gonna take care of no other kid. We are, we are able to nurture too. The Bible says, David said, David, a man, David, a killer of giants says, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. He's, he's, he's saying her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. He's, he's giving, he's assigning to his soul the feminine characteristic because his soul has the ability to nurture and give birth. Like he can give birth to ideas. So just because we are not breasted creatures doesn't mean we are not nurturers. And the more we, the more healthier, the healthier we become, the more those double standards starts to start to crumble because it's, it's, it, it is absolutely wrong and silly for a woman, particularly us men, a lot of us are touched by, by men who are not our fathers, touched in a positive way, raised by them. And, and, and somehow in, we become so broken that we, we grow up and we say, we don't want, and what we don't want, we describe your mama. You, you, you're literally describing your mama. And if, if you, it's so sick that you would, you would, you would, the greatest woman you say in the world, you wouldn't have nothing to do with her. But, but it, it just depends, all of it depends on how we become healthier as men. It goes back to my point that when, when men are in their place, everything, everything gets better. Conservative Republicans love to point to Chicago. If men get, if men get in their place in Chicago, I think Spike Lee kind of knew it when he was talking. He he did some movie about where the, the women was like, "Y'all ain't getting no more sex, no more looking until the, if y'all stop killing each other." Because because if the men got under control, it would uh, everything would change. So there's a mission. It seems impossible, but it, it is not. It's not. There's a verse in the Bible that says, "With God, all things are possible." With God, all things are possible. Black man, I say to you, with God, all things are possible. Do you know how amazing and powerful you are? You are amazing. Uh, men, you are amazing. And when you walk in your purpose, it won't be without, it won't be without uh, difficulty. That let's, let's, let's don't paint that. But but a woman will submit. She will support. She will do what submission is. She will give her power to you, her heart to you, uh, to be protected, to be nurtured, to be taught, to be to be led. Um, and I just, you know, and so the 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 negativity that we see sometimes from men, from women, they just tired. They, they just they just tired, and sometimes when they see you, they see unfortunately another another opportunity to get more frustrated. But walk in your purpose, just walk over that. What you want to talk to me for? Just ignore it and just and just keep being yourself. Walk her down, pull the walls down, love her into submission, love her into it. Love her into submission is possible. You know what, Pastor James? Um, just to touch on a little bit of what you just said. You know, when a woman meets a man that they're willing to submit to, and I'm speaking to the men. Y'all know me. I'll always talk to the men. There's going to be a struggle in her in submitting. There's going to be an internal struggle going on in our own heart to submit because it's new territory for her. But as men, we have got to be patient. Come on, man. Gentle. We have to be patient and gentle in leading because we still have to lead. We still have to be the leader, but we really have to be patient and lead with love. Uh, because what may come out as crazy to us 
it more than likely is this the internal battle that she's having because it's new ground. You know, even as men, when we when we into a new situation, we can get fearful. Um, I challenge anybody to step on stage and do a public speech to an audience of a thousand people. <laughs> if you think that you won't go to some internal struggles and it's the very same thing. It is normal. It is natural. It is, you know, and we just have to be patient so that we can, um, you know, let them have this struggle. Let them go through it. We don't need to interject. Um, but it is going to take some patience on our part. Uh, so that's just for me to the men. I, I want to co-sign that. Absolutely. That, and that's what I meant in that small phrase that it's not going, it's not just going to happen smoothly and, and it shouldn't. I mean, you go to a bank and you borrow $50,000. If you borrow $10,000, they're going to say, what, let me see what your whole financial history is like. They're gonna put you through some process just to lend you money that you got it that you gotta pay back at an interest rate at, at, at interest. But but when it comes to women, I, I want you to give them my heart with no process. Animals don't do that. That that line that she said, y'all gotta fight it out. N n you know, nobody that would be foolish. It is. You, you you have to it, it's you, you have to be patient 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 and and let me tell you man uh when a woman realizes that you have been patient when a woman realizes that god has healed her and grown her through your love and under your leadership you you, you will have to you have to, if somebody mess with you, you have to be like, baby, please, I got it. She'll be jumping off the top row. She'll be macho man, Randy Savage. She'll be, I mean, she will fight for you. Uh, like you have to say, sis, baby, calm down. It's just, what did she say to you? How did they talk to you? You know, cause, cause she'll protect you. She, she, she loves it, but it's, it, it ain't for free. It ain't, it ain't for free. That stuff they put on uh, uh, these reality shows where, uh, where a woman is super protective and she'll fight, but the dude ain't earn it. That's, that's brokenness. Um, that's, if, if I go apply for a job, they say, bring my resume. Let me see what your, your track record is. Let me see what your ideas are. Let me see what your, your employment history is. But somehow, sometimes in marriage, we want to come, we want women just to be like, you got the job. No, uh-uh. But you are a man and you're built to, you're built to sustain. You ever went apply for a job and knew, you knew you had it? While you were being interviewed, you were like, I know I got this. It's just a formality. And you were just answering questions, you knew it, that's it. I ain't talking about machismo. I'm talking about real confidence in yourself. Women respond to confidence. If you're gonna be a bridge over troubled waters, you're gonna be bridged from a space of where they of singleness to a marriage, you're gonna be that bridge to cross over that river, then then don't be upset when the woman just tap the bridge to see if it holds. It's fine. If you are a well bit bridge, you ain't gonna fall because somebody tapping you to find out if you if you can hold and support or wait. Go ahead, it's fine. Test me. I got on a ride the other day and the man put the thing down. I put the thing down. And then the teenager came to jerk it to see if it was, they jerked it. It didn't, it didn't bother the, the harness. The harness wasn't offended because it he jerked it. And neither should we be offended when a woman jerk and say, can you hold me? I, 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 can you hold me? My heart ain't nothing to play with it. Can you, can you, can you hold me? Do you mean what you say? Are you more than just good looks? Are you more than just a, a, a good dresser? She jerking, pulling on the straps because you're about to go on a wild ride. <laughs> you see? All right. Okay. All right. Well, we have uh, reached the point where we're going to break out. Go ahead, Pastor Jane. I need to say this. Yep. I did not pick that AI. <laughs> A uh, picture of me. I'm not conceited. But <laughs> a joke self, she did that. I, I did not do it. I did not 
put that to be presented. Uh, and then go have my wife with the wings on in her hair. I see, see sisters stick together. See how they gonna do you. <laughs> well, I, I knew you'd be on camera so everybody could see, you know, what you really look like. But Pastor James <laughs> likes superheroes and, uh, and and cartoons and all this stuff. So I thought that was appropriate representation <laughs> of his personality. So <laughs> uh -huh. we're gonna do a uh, breakout room so everybody can, uh, you thoughts. It's practical for all of us. Um, Question. I'll oh, go right ahead. Yeah, I couldn't raise, get my hand to raise. Um, the question is, how do you get a man that doesn't quite understand submission to listen to your perspective? It's like, um, say for instance, you meet a guy and they seems like everything's going good. And then he starts talking about submission, but then his definition is like back in the day, I guess, kind of submission before people really understood it well. How do you kind of get him to, um, I guess, be more open-minded to, to really research what true submission is? Um, I think that, of course, the opportunities like this, uh, where you can join a group, a session, and there's a discussion about it, um, you know, and it's something that you all can do together. Of course, that would be beneficial. Share this video. Um, and also, I think just being having very transparent, clear-cut conversations um, when it comes to something like being in a relationship, and if it's something that you're considering being long-term, I just say, don't beat around the bush. Um, you have to have clear communication about what your expectations are um, for a husband and how you expect to be led, so to speak. Um, that's not telling him how to lead you, um, but it's um, giving him the biblical principle of what submission looks like um, in your eyes. Um, and so I think just sitting down, breaking apart the scripture together um, and saying, give him an example. Hey, if this happened in our household, how do you think that you would handle this? Um, definitely scenarios are all, I, I love scenarios. Um, it just gets people to thinking. Um, and so I think just being very clear cut with your communication is essential. Natalie has her hand up. Okay, Natalie. I uh, just want to say and echo what everyone is saying that thanks for joining the call because it's, de it's definitely refreshing hearing it from married people, uh, no less the pastor and his wife. So I think I just appreciate you guys um, for putting your input in. So my question is on the opposite spectrum when it comes to the woman submitting um, to the man, I understand that and I feel like I do have a good grasp on how to art how to better like seek that in my next partner but my question is what ha like the opposite spectrum to that like when it comes to the guy um being a leader in the household but like us as women we can see that they're struggling in a certain area how do we as women kind of step up respectfully like saying hey i understand you're i i can tell you're struggling in this area how can i be a helpmate because we talk about being a helpmate a lot so i kind of want to know how does that conversation look like when you see your partner your husband struggling and you do want to step up in that in that light supporting and being submissive does not mean i'll say this being submissive does that does not mean supporting a wrong decision you don't want your husband or your family or your marriage to fail. And so um, trying to think of an example, um, I like to be a backseat driver. Um, and so, you know, I like to tell my husband, I think you should turn here, turn there um, when we're traveling or if we get lost. Um, and, you know, sometimes it'll be like, okay, Janine, I've got it. I got it between the GPS and, and the Lord. I got this, I got this. Um, now it would be wrong for me though, if I clearly know that he's about to make a wrong turn to not say anything and just let him turn the wrong way. And then we're off path, we're an hour late for where we need to be, you know, I'm still going to speak up respectfully 
hey, honey, I know that you said that you have this, um, but I just want to say I'm pretty confident that this is the way and the direction that we should turn. Um, I follow your leadership, but I just want to make this known. I think that this might be the best decision. Could you consider it? Um, so I just think the way that we present ourselves, the way that um, we speak to our spouses is everything. It's not necessarily what you say, but how you say it. And so I think that that it's a it's a misstep or um, yeah, it's just a misstep to support a wrong decision. Um, I think that my husband and I, we can have conversations and sometimes those conversations come to a head where we can agree to disagree. Um, but in the end, if it, if it comes to something like that, then I'm going to follow his leadership. I'm going to follow what he says. He's the head of the household. I'm going to follow that. And it's okay if he makes a mistake. It's okay. He's a human being. He's doing the best that he can. He's following God's vision for our family. And so if something goes wrong, it's okay. We're going to pick up the pieces together and keep it rolling. Um, but I, we can have strong decisions and I can have a voice um, and I can speak confidently um, without being disrespectful. Um, and so I think that over time, I put in the comments earlier that time allows for consistency and consistency allows for trust in a relationship. And so because I've been consistent with the way that I've spoken to him and the way that I've given my opinion, um, and then likewise with him, the way that he's been consistent in the family and shown up for me and my girls, we can both take each other's, um, conversation and communication and, and bring that together and make a decision together. So it's not just a dictatorship always of him making a decision. Um, we can come together and make decisions together. I mean, like I said, if it comes to a point where eh, we're kind of on the fence, then I'm going to follow his leadership with that. But it's just a matter of doing it respectfully. Trying to read the comments at the same time. Um, okay, no papers. I'll say this, um, men are grown up boys in some regard. Um, when you have a little boy, a lot of them like praise, not that our girls don't, but when you praise a little boy, he tends to get that look on his face like, mm, oh, shucks. like you didn't, you didn't have to say that, but they want it. Men are grown up little boys. <laughs> they want to hear the praise um, for what they've done, how they've led you, um, the decisions that they've made and how they've led to the success of the family. And so um, I just encourage you all to do that in your relationships. Praise him for the little things and the big things and, and make a note of it. You know, I remember, I'm not saying this um, as an example, but um, you can say, I remember two months ago when you said that we should have done this, it's coming to fruition now, babe. I really appreciate your leadership in that department. Um, we're doing great. We're thriving now. Um, they absolutely love that praise. They want to feel useful um, in the relationship. Let me see. Acknowledgement. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Acknowledgement. So Shane said, it's difficult to follow when you know something makes no sense. <laughs> you should not follow it. Okay. <laughs> like I said, if it's completely wrong and it's detrimental, you don't follow that. Um, you have a voice and you speak up about that um, and you do it in a respectful manner. Um, you don't, or, you know, in a conversation, you have to say, honey, make it make sense. Make it make sense to me. I want to follow your, your leadership, but I just don't understand. Can you please make it make sense to me? First Lady James, can I add yes. to that? Sure. Um, one of the things that I had to learn as a woman in terms of what my role would be as a wife is the difference between being his helper and his fixer. And sometimes when we recognize those who we are um, either dating or married to aren't don't necessarily have the same um, behavior or thought pattern or would take the same steps to handle a situation as we would, we jump into fixer mode. 
we want to help fix him. But what I had to um, humbly learn is that one, yep, I would acknowledge, I should acknowledge the things that he does do extremely well and, and bring up, you know, with observations or examples of here's what happened when this type of decision was made. You know, do you agree? What are your thoughts on that? What can you do? Because as a helper, you have to go into helping mode. It's about helping him potentially solve his own problem. And then at the end, you can say, and if you want any advice from me, let me know I'm here. But here's, here's what I'm observing. How can you work on that? You know, think about it. How can you work on it? And if you need me, I'm here. And that helped a lot because men know most of the time, they know when they're not at the level that we, we need them or want them to be. They, they know it's pretty clear. So sometimes having you fix it for them is another knockdown, right? So we have to give them an opportunity to recognize, acknowledge that they're not quite there yet and go off and think about how do they, you know, how do they improve? And then you as a, a, a wife or a girlfriend, you know, tell them, oh yeah, I see the change. This is great. Yep. Thank you, baby. Right. And I'm here if you need me. So just, just some advice from my perspective. Yeah, absolutely. I have an example with that. And, and I do want to say doing something differently doesn't make it wrong. So, you know, we all have our different ways of doing things. And if your husband does it differently, that's okay. It's not wrong. It's just different. <laughs> um, my husband happened to mention that just kind of financially, I'm the one that's a little bit more organized with that. Um, and coming into the marriage, I kind of felt like I, I wanted to give him an opportunity to lead, not necessarily to pay the bills, um, like to have the money to pay the bills, but to actually pay the bills, to be able to have that structure for the household. Um, and it just wasn't working, y'all. It, it just wasn't working, you know. Um, he just would forget about certain things. And then by the time I would look at a bill, I'm like, do you realize that this is late? There's now a late fee or just what have you. And, um, you know, just my personality and that kind of organizational type stuff, I just, it was driving me crazy. And so I wanted to set him up for success as well as our family. And so I said, you know what, let's go into our online bill pay. I think that this might be a helpful solution. Um, let's look at the bill, see when they're typically due. And maybe we can set up your bill pay to be automatic so that it's just automatically coming out of your account. You, that's something that's taken off your plate. You don't have to think about it, but yet you're still providing for the family in a timely manner and all of that. And so that was my way of being a help me without dis diminishing him as a man and saying, you're just not stepping up to the plate. I just said, I think, you know, just organizational wise, you know, I think that you need a little help in that department. So let's get you that. Um, and then he can, ha he can handle it from there. So that's just an example of doing something different <laughs> um, and meeting him where he was. Um, I think Lakeisha has her hand up. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, hi. Thank you so much um, just for you guys and just being transparent in all of you, um, your wisdom that you're imparting on us. Um, so I do have a question concerning submission in, in when you're dating. Um, scripture says you, we are to be submitted to our own husband. It doesn't say people that we're dating everything else. Mm -hmm. So I really hate when that comes up. If, if a person even because and I've had that discussion with someone, I'm not supposed to be submitted to you because I'm not your wife. So I guess my question is, in a dating realm, if it's, and if it's somebody, well, it wasn't someone who I was just dating for a few minutes. It was someone who I was dating for a while. Um, he ended up not being the one that the Lord had for me. So I'm happy I didn't, right? <laughs> but I'm just saying like, um, in a dating realm, because I mean, I, I think majority of us are single um, and I'm my next one will be my husband. So uh, I want to make sure that, um, I guess what was some, I mean, what would it look like um, for a single woman, if it is someone who we know that we are serious for, I know not to give the full reins over until we actually get married, because I'm not going to try to play, you know, play the role. I'm not going to play married or give him that title until it's, it's actually what the Bible says until I'm married. But what would it look like? I guess, how would we, I guess, somewhat show that we have that, um, we have it in us, you know, as a single, because a lot of, again, I'm older, you know, and, um, you know, and if people like a lot of things your husband said, men have that stereotype. That, okay. 
if you've been single for so long, if you have certain things, you've accomplished certain things that you're not going to be submissive. And that's not really the case. And I do. That's why I really enjoyed this presentation, because he did explain it very well about how I don't have a problem with submitting, but I'm just not going to. And uh, I believe that's Lisa. I'm not going to submit to anybody. <laughs> so that's the other thing. But how how do I do? How do I show that that I do have the willingness in me, even though they may be looking and saying, OK, no, she may not be submissive. She may not. But how would I, I mean, how would a, a woman, I guess, if we find out that's the one that we want to be with, without just, I am, I'm not trying, you know, but I'm not going to be able to give him the full submission and we're not really married because I don't feel like biblically I should be doing that. So I guess I'm kind of figure, trying to figure out, I guess, the the balance of it. Like, how would that, how would that look, look how would that look like so that I don't get because I do get it. I mean, like I said, I've I've heard it uh, several times that you don't look same like the woman who would be submissive. And it's because I am more of a take charge type of woman. And I don't want to get that approach. So you know, I'm trying to figure out like, how do I get that approach off of me? So you are a wife before you're married, right? God has put all of all of that in you before you get married. And so you're able to show that and exercise what God has put in you before that. And the man has also mm -hmm. been, he's also a husband before he gets married. And so it's not that you're playing marriage or anything <laughs> like that, but you are setting yourselves up and kind of getting in, into a routine of what your relationship is going to look like in marriage if you're serious about this person. And so um, you can follow his, you can follow his lead. It's okay. I mean, you don't do it to your detriment or anything like that. Again, you don't support wrong decisions, but you can follow his lead. You need to be able to start doing that. You need to be able to see what that looks like. If I follow his lead on this particular decision, um, does it is it successful? It, is he a dictator? Um, you know, when we're trying to make decisions together. So I don't think that it's necessarily that you're trying to play a marriage role, even though you're not married. But you have to start look, seeing what that's going to look like um, if he's able to accept your criticism of him. Again, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Is he able to accept your criticism? Are you able to take his input um, and encouragement for you to maybe do something a little bit differently? Um, and so even as a single woman, if this is a serious relationship, you can start to put some of those things into practice in regards to following his leadership, submitting to submitting to him. I think that that's OK. OK, thank you. I do. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll break out room to close in less than a minute. Um, I can keep is, it open a little bit longer if you guys, Sashawn. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Go ahead, Lori. <laughs> Hold on, let me go to the breakout room so they don't close us out. Shoot. Come on. Did anyone else have a burning question or comment? It's not allowing me to keep them open anymore. Sorry, oh. guys. Well, I've enjoyed my time with you all. Thank you for um, just being open with me um, and allowing me this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. My, my pleasure. We're going to circle back around with these men folk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. I want to talk about the things that we can do um, for the men. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, all right. That's it when in the general sense. Okay. All right. We can absolutely uh, strategize and come up with some stuff that we can do uh, publicly. Not just in, in Christian singles, but in, in general. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm, I'm, I'm for it. I'm all okay. for it. Okay. Well, welcome back, everybody, to the main room. And um, I hope that you all found the uh, breakout room discussions beneficial. So we're yes. back together to, um, uh, in case there are some questions that folks want to pose to the opposite sex. So, um, Men, if you have questions for uh, Janine and uh, women, if you have questions for um, Lowell, then um, here's your opportunity. Or if you want to ask questions of any of the other men or women that are um, in, you know how we do. Um, it, we're open and transparent. We're all 
in this together, trying to um, learn from each other and uplift each other. So um, does anyone have any questions? Well, I guess we'll start first. If you're okay asking anything that you didn't get a chance to ask in the breakout room, because we tried to give a lot, you know, enough time, but sometimes we get on the roll. So I don't want to, anybody to lose their spot with that if they had something they wanted to ask or share. Go ahead, Lisa. Um, okay, so this question is for Pastor James. Ooh, child. Okay, so in the woman breakout room, there was a question I was asked. Like, I feel like I need a drink after that. Like, I am like perplexed, but the question had a little to do with um, um, showing submissive traits while still in a dating phase. So I guess from a man's perspective, what are you looking for in the dating phase um, of the qualities of a potentially submissive wife? Um, well, that, that's a really excellent question uh, because you can't give all of yourself to, to somebody who hasn't become your husband yet. So I, I think it is just allowing a man to lead. Uh, it is allowing a man to lead in that dating space. Um, for example, if if a man uh, likes you, he's pursuing you, there will be things that he's trying to do. I'll give you an example of, of, of what not to do, of what it doesn't look like. I, there was a guy I worked with and he was frustrated with this young lady he went on a date with. He said he took her to <clears throat> the second or third date uh, he took her hiking and she was like you're different and he was kind of offended by that because she just kind of complained a little but he was it wasn't like this strenuous hike now like now if you take her up Mount Everest the first date and she's complaining you're saying she ain't submissive then you crazy you just have crazy she's fine no but what she could have done was saying I've never experienced this. I appreciate you bringing me. I'm not sure if it's my cup of tea or not, but I thank you for introducing me to something that I did not know. That's an example of how she could show that, hey, I'm, I'm available to lead even in spaces that I'm not uncomfortable. Um, and just be that, that it's really not complicated. It's just, not not saying that you think it's complicated, but it's just being, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just being very, uh, having good manners, like taking to a restaurant, thank you for bringing me here. Do you come here often? The food is great. Um, when you bring out the food, even if it's bad, don't say nothing about the food. Oh God, they uncooked it. This is horrible. This is the worst sandwich I ever had. If I, if I took the time to bring you here, why would, why? here's what women don't realize sometimes is that it takes a lot of nerve to get up to ask you out. It takes a lot of nerve to say, I'm putting myself out there, pushing my, through my own idiosyncrasies, my own insecurities and put myself out there. One of our brothers in our session was saying, he said, that ain't me just coming up to a woman and say, hey, what's up? He said, but I'm learning to be comfortable when I'm uncomfortable. And um, having that in mind will kind of change just naturally how you interact with a man. So those are just some things where you just just allow him to, to lead and, and there'll be opportunities for you to allow him to lead when a man is you know pursuing that relationship with you. I hope that makes sense. It does. I guess in that same breath, like, is there examples of uh, submission that are probably inappropriate in the dating phase and should be reserved solely for um, marriage? I think a woman, um, T.D. Jakes wrote this book about instincts. And I think a woman's instincts and being believers, having the Holy Spirit, you, 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 you do kind of sometimes you have to check yourself, men and women, you got to pace yourself, you know, like I say this comically, but the first date, oh, he's so nice. He paid for my food. He was on time. He told me where we were going. He drove or he met me there. 
he did. Oh God, I want to give him, I want to give him his babies. I want to have his baby. No, okay. We're rushing. We're rushing. You, you kind of have to check yourself. And I think you know internally uh, how much to give. Only give what is earned. Only give what is earned. I don't, I'm not going to stay somewhere where you just give me stuff and I, and I don't earn it. I'm just not going to appreciate it. As a man, I'm not going to appreciate it. That's kind of human nature. So um, you, you trust your instincts uh, and particularly, you know, to something you had said earlier, which I thought was a good point, um, but you have to exercise some discernment in the advice you get from your seniors. Because sometimes they give you good advice, but they're giving you advice on how to maneuver with a man that's broken. So when you get with a man that's whole, you are applying survival tactics to a man that ain't oppressive. He ain't mean, he ain't disrespectful. So some of that sage advice, you gotta eat the meat and spit out the bones because the guy that God has put in front of you or that's pursuing you, He's, he's not interested in being like your uncle or, or like your granddaddy. Um, he, he's educated, he's, he, he's different. So uh, those are, this is just my response to that. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you for trusting me with that question. So Sean, there's one thing I, I wanted to say, and I know I'm talking a lot, there's something that the brothers were saying in our session, and I thought this was so powerful, is that, uh, and I wrote it down here, is to tell your story. Um, unfortunately, we live in, a, in times where men have just abandoned, you know, family. They just kind of abandon them. And uh, I understand, I, I've had to think and understand why a woman would, you know, kind of have a baby with a man and you find out you're on know, child support because I understand the emotion of it now that if I got to chase you down, if I got to hassle you all the time for, for $400.75 a month, <laughs> then it, it can cause more mental health destruction than it's almost worth. And, um, but I, I, I almost went off track, but, men that's where I was going sometimes we we encounter women who have not been raised in a home what a healthy man mm -hmm. and, and so it's you are their first encounter with what healthy masculinity looks like Deion Sanders said I was a full grown man ran touchdowns uh, built stadiums on his athletic ability, but this it was the first time he ever seen a man tie a tie in a mirror. He had never saw that. Can run faster than anybody, but never saw that. Uh, conversely, our women have sometimes, like I, t I take for granted that um, I got to hear my dad say to my mom, my mom thinks Brenda, Brenda, it's fine, relax. That, Brenda, come on, no, we, that's not, we're not gonna do that, it's fine. I take that for granted. That, that's a healthy check. Mm -hmm. That's a check in his wife in a healthy, non-threatening, non-demeaning way. But what if you're 25 and you never heard that, but you have heard Tupac call a woman a hoe and a bitch? What if, what if, what if, what if you have heard men say how fat your behind is and how good your body is, but you never, so, so that can be, that can be, be difficult. So I think one of the solutions is for men to tell your story, to tell your story, tell a woman how you got there, how you got to this space. You know, I'm an engineer, but I never, and you know, and I never saw an engineer growing up. I, I work in media and I never saw anybody that looked like me. And I had to push and I, and I worked hard and I'm here. And I think women will appreciate the story uh, Facebook understands that. Social media understands that <laughs> about telling stories. So uh, tell your story, and and that requires us being vulnerable, being authentic, 
uh, being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Now, I pose this question to our sisters. How do you receive when a man is vulnerable? When he says to you, when he's giving you a story and says, listen, I'm, I'm learning how to be what you need me to be because I never saw it growing up either. But I'm, I, I'm, I think I, I got some things, but some stuff I'm working on. How do you handle when a man is vulnerable? Mm-hmm. Well, while while folks are getting their thoughts together, I wanted to um, just kind of expound on something you were saying, Pastor James, because um, we we all need grace when it comes to learning how not just the roles, but also each other, because everybody's different. Everybody was raised in a different way. Their experiences, perspectives are different. So I always think about when we talk about how children don't come with a handbook. And so although you may have dated and you may have even been married before, but it's still a process to learn how to work together as a team, what each other needs to feel Uh, her to feel comfortable to um, feel protected and that I mean not protected both ways just as Pastor James was saying as far as being comfortable being vulnerable and being open and saying this was my experience growing up or the things that I didn't get that I need and um, so when you think about children it's, it's kind of the same thing as the dating as in we may be an older sibling and how and we were me and Ben have babysat, but that ain't nothing like having your own child. You just because you, you know, to watch the child or you, you know, you were a big sis or big brother to your younger siblings or your cousins or whoever, you may even still be kind of like a pseudo mom or a pseudo dad to others in your family or you know that are close to you. It's, it's completely different than being an actual parent. And so you can't kind of surmise that, oh, because I've experienced these things in, in my past or in my history, that I can now uh, apply that and make it as if it's going to be the same for all experiences, the same for all of the opposite sex. And sometimes those were good experiences and sometimes they weren't. But we learn. God gives us the grace to learn and grow and change from our experiences to be better. So that exposure is not to live in that place, but to learn from that place wow. Wow. and to be able to say, all right, I did it this way, didn't go too well, or here's some things that I that did work, here's some things I didn't. And so now I take that to the next experience. And then too, still, even if you had great experiences, you still have to learn, okay, how is this person, how are they receiving, perceiving what I'm giving how are we going to work together as a team? Denise. Good evening or good afternoon, everyone. Um, just wanted to say, first of all, Pastor James and Mrs. James, you guys are amazing. And this has been a phenomenal um, discussion. Um, and Mrs. James, I really appreciate your transparency, your wisdom, your honesty, is with the breakout room was excellent. Um, to answer your question, Pastor James, for me, when a man is vulnerable, it makes me want to be vulnerable as well. Um, and it allows me, it makes me feel safe to open up because now it doesn't feel like I'm just putting my stuff out there, but we're both putting ourselves out there um, to see what transpires. My tendency, and I don't know if this is other women, but my tendency when a man becomes transparent is I want to, and vulnerable, I want to dig deeper. That doesn't always pan well, (laughs) is what I realized. (laughs) Um, Because it could be a little bit too deep too soon. And so I am realizing that um, to allow a man to be vulnerable in the way that he's gonna be vulnerable, but not, but not ask too many questions, not dig too deep too soon, just continue to 
create a safe space for him to do it again in the future, right? Um, so that's what I'm learning, but it does, his vulnerability makes me want to open up, makes me want to learn more, um, makes me feel safer and safety is super important to me. So I hope that answers your question from my perspective. That is real good. That's real good. I, I wrote that down. And I wanted, I'm glad you said that because I want our brothers to hear that. Brothers, we lead. We are designed to lead. And she said when, <clears throat> for her, and I'm sure for some other women as well, when we are vulnerable, it elicits a response for them to be vulnerable. One of the challenges with, my, with, with men as we live today is that we are trying to put the responsibility on the woman that God has put on us. And um, Ron, you said in a comment, something like um, to the effect that we have to, you know, be careful who we are vulnerable to or it's earned. And I, I think we do have to be careful who we're vulnerable to. Uh, now that That's a fact. Just can't give your vulnerability to everybody. Uh, that's dangerous. That's actually, we got a word for it. It's called toxicity. <laughs> it's quite toxic. Um, but as when we we have to be careful just a little bit when it said when we say well i'll give my vulnerability as a man to a woman who earns it well i'm leading i'm leading if everything is if i'm waiting on her to earn it she's waiting on me to earn it i'm waiting for her to earn it she then we had a stalemate the man leads i act first i move i make the first move i'm I'm, even if a woman is giving me the eye first, she still, guess what? She still want me to make the move. She still want me to come over there and say something. So it, it works best when we put skin in the game first, whatever that skin is, whether it's introducing to you first, because even when a woman, let's say, says something to you first, in the back of her mind, she's waiting on you to, to confirm in her that you are really interested. Is it interesting? Because I said something, I started the conversation. There's a, there's a way in that conversation where you can excuse this word because I can't get another word to take over. You can lead. <laughs> yeah. You can you can assume the lead because no one, no one, particularly a woman, nobody wants to be in a relationship where they're not sure. Do he like me? Is he really into me or not? So that's torture, you know. And then in, in five or six months, you would just come out, she'll just blow up. You'd be like, what's wrong with you? She's frustrated. She wants to know, do you like me or not? I see we got two hands. Yeah, go ahead, Natalie. Uh, so, Pastor, to answer your question, I think when, for me at least, when a man is vulnerable with me, it evokes like trust um, is the number one thing because along with communication, you know, wow. trust. So if I, if you, like we all established, like it's difficult to open up and be vulnerable with anybody. And not only that, but you have to consider like how much to give, right? So I think it automatically opens the door of trust. And if you, if you, are vulnerable with me and I have the feeling that you trust me with this information automatically like mm. walls of submission will break down because that makes me feel like if he trusts me with this information then I can show trust that and and be submissive because he's there's consideration going all around like you know you trust me with what is precious and hurtful to you so me seeing that just wants to to show the way I trust in a in a in um in a different way as well. So and I show trust by giving submission. So mm. that's that's my perspective on that. Yes, yes. Awesome. Thanks, Natalie. Um, Sean. Thank you. Yeah, Nick. just um, you know, you know, just to talk on vulnerability. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big fan of not everything is for everybody. 
Um, not everything is for everybody. Um, but when it comes to being the first and being vulnerable, you know, the way I look at it, if Christ is the head of the church and I'm supposed to be like Christ and my wife is supposed to submit to me, so I have to be the first. I just have to be first. I have to be the first to love. I have to be the first to be supportive. I have to, I have to be the first. So Christ didn't come down and say, okay, well, I'm going to wait till y'all get your stuff together. Then I'm going to die for you. Come on. He, he said, while we were still sinners, he died. So I can't wait for her to get herself together for me to start being vulnerable, for me to start being loving or whatever. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's the perspective that I kind of, I kind of go at it. I need, I just need to be the first. I need to be the first to make the sacrifices. I need to be the first to be understanding. That's, that's what leadership is um, to me, for me, you know, is that I have to take the lead. So um, it is what it is, but that's, you know, that's, and, and I think the men should be, we should be first. We, we should go up to the woman, be the first to go up to the woman and express interest if that's, you know, where we at. Um, being first for the guys, I share a secret with you. Being first puts you, um, how can I put this? It's easier to motivate, inspire, and encourage. Let me say it like that. If you're being first. So if you're leading with your heart, then you can motivate, encourage, and inspire her heart. So it can break down so many walls, so many barriers, so that you can really get to know who the person really is underneath all of the nonsense that we're taught in social media and, you know, television and Hollywood housewives and Atlanta housewives and all the nonsense. So um, that's, you know, that's, that's my take on that part of it. Uh, fellas, I, 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 I want to inter- thank you, uh, Sean, because I, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, uh, Natalie said it invokes trust. Um, if I would be just overjoyed if you took that away, if you left this session understanding the power that God has given you as a man. Um, and I know sometimes we feel like women have the power in the beginning, they got all the power. No, no, no. It, vulnerability can make you feel like others have the power. But remember, there's no power struggle here. We, we're, not, we're not fighting to be on top. The, the the vulnerability that you that we feel is because we don't want to get rejected but but you are built to take a I'm not interested and move on it it ain't the end of the world she ain't this she ain't what we don't know what's going on she could be in a relationship could be where it's complicated she could be saving you grief. <laughs> To so just be in a space where I'm being healed right now and I ain't ready to date. But uh, but I, I think that that leadership uh, it does require risk. It's like we're trying to, I'm, I'm trying to find love, but I don't want my heart to be broke. Well, you can't, anybody that's an entrepreneur, uh, you 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 can't expose yourself, you can't pursue. Uh, you know, uh, financial success without exposing yourself to to being broke. Like it's it's just you know no risk, uh, no reward. And sometimes we're trying to cheat the system. That's why these men have these seminars and like have have every woman say yes to you by knowing these tricks and and you know look at her in your eyes. Turn this way. Turn it. It's relationship that she's a she's a person. Not a machine. Touch here, touch there. Okay, react. No, that's porn. This is real life. This is real. This is a real being that you have to interact with. There is no machine. But I, I see a thing, Ebony. Ebony, yeah. Am I saying that name right? Has a hand up. Hi, Pastor James. It's actually Ebony, but I don't. Mind. Ebony, I'm sorry. Ebony, you can't put an accent um, anywhere on here. So 
first of all, I want I do want to say thank you for this. I know it's going up on two o'clock, so I'm trying to keep it quick for everyone. But this is more of a message that you said for for women, which is I had to learn to let a man be first. And, you know, being a, a single woman for quite some time, I lived in my masculinity while at work, right? Because work becomes a, some of the, pr the predominant thing that you do. And in my masculinity, I'm like, okay, if there's something that I want, go for it. I'm get it. You know, that's, that's my mindset. Right. But I had to recognize that I needed a different mindset when it kind of came to relationships. And I had to sit back and say, it's okay. You need to let a man be first. You need to let a man, you had to, I had to learn to let a man earn, right. Earn my trust, mm. earn my um, heart, earn my support because I was just like, okay, I want him. He has my standards. He has my qualities. Let's go. Let's make it happen. You know, but what I'm recognizing or realizing, because this is, this is so good. What Sean was saying and what you were saying is that it's so important to let the leadership come first from a man, the interest come first, the love come first from a man. And I'm not saying we don't reciprocate that along the way. It's just that we, we need to be patient move away from our masculinity into our femininity and allow that to happen in order for it to be, you know, successful. Wow. 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 Gosh, thank you for saying, sharing that. Um, brothers, I just want to encourage you, you guys um, there now, particularly for black men, I'm going to say this to, to you all sisters as well. We were talking about this. I'm of the opinion that there is nothing harder in the universe to become than a black man. There is nothing harder. I think now, in the words of Malcolm X, I think the most unprotected, underserved, unrepresented person on the planet is a black woman. Uh, but we, they love us when we're dribbling. They love us when we're running and jumping. But as soon as we step outside of that space, as uh, I think it was Brian said this, they, we, it, they can't stand us. So uh, we bring we bring to you a desire to be accepted and seen and, and seen. Um, and that is uh, very important to us. And I'm just saying, brothers, you can get that. Uh, you know, when you heard Sister Ibenye say, like she's saying, she's open to a man earning it. Um, the, one of the worst things you can do, I think, sometimes is be on out of date and, and you're just like, well, she ain't saying nothing. I mean, even if you, even if you got to look up stuff on Google, questions to ask on a date, to get conversation started, uh, to introduce yourself, talk about yourself. Uh, what do you find interesting about yourself? If I can't answer that question, how am I expected a, a, a somebody else to be to find me interesting when I can't answer what I find interesting? What's interesting about about, about my story? And I'm encouraging black men to, to men to let you know that hey, you have an interesting story. You've got something that a woman wants to hear. And um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, you know, Pastor James, um, we uh, we actually normally end at, at one, but we always go as long as people want to talk. But, um, <laughs> for those that that might need to drop, would you mind praying us out? And um, and that way we can let people who need to go go in, in God's grace, and and then we can keep going on. All right, let's uh, let's bow our heads. If you wouldn't mind, this is just the way I pray. But I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Father, we bless you for your goodness and your mercy and your grace. Thank you, O oh God, for this time of sharing. Thank you, Lord, that you have made yourself known and present in the exchanging of ideas. 
your word declares, oh God, that we are to be edified for the work of ministry. And we pray, oh God, that in our sharing and our vulnerability and our honesty and our exchanging of ideas, we have been edified. Lord, I touch and agree with these people that everything that they that's under their auspices, everything that's under their authority, that everything that they are praying about and trying to build, that it will prosper. Lord, there are we are here and some of us are broken in our hearts. Some of us are scarred and not healed from our trauma. And we pray, oh God, that our relational trauma, we would be healed. And some of us in our season of being healed, help us to stay focused that day by day by day, we would become whole, not just healed, but whole. I speak wholeness in our minds. I speak wholeness in our hearts, wholeness in our homes, our children, uh, that they would be, they would be successful, that they, you would make their way prosperous. I pray for the healing of every man, that you would heal his heart, heal his ego, heal his psyche, that he would walk in the authority for which you have made him. Teach us your ways. As your will servant David said, we say to you, teach us your ways. Teach us what it is to be who you've called us to be. Empower us to do it by your Holy Spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.